This is one of those life lesson type of talks. In this case, the life lesson is how to not get thrown out of college because that would be too bad. That would mean that you wasted a lot of money and a lot of time. And so we're going to talk a little bit about academic integrity. You might wonder why are we talking about in, why are we talking about academic integrity when we talk about search? And the real reason is because search is probably one of those things that will get you in trouble when we start to think about academic integrity. So what does academic integrity mean? To me, what it means is that you are here to learn and you are going to abide by various restrictions that we create in order to create a learning environment for you. Let me give you an example. I teach a course on computer operating systems. The assignments for that class have been developed over a period of decades. They are hard, they are extensive, they have required an enormous amount of preparation and time and energy by multiple people, including me and my course staff, to prepare these assignments. So we don't change them every year. In fact, we don't change them very often. Meaning that if you want to find answers to those assignments online using your search engine or searching on GitHub or a variety of other ways, you can do that. You can find the answers online, you can copy them, and you can submit them as your own. Now here's what's going to happen if you do that. You're going to fail my class. Every year I catch multiple people doing this and the result is always the same. They fail the class, they end up having to take it over, sometimes they don't graduate. It can get very sad and unfortunate. But here's the problem. So you might be thinking, you know, this doesn't seem reasonable. If I was working at a company and I did the same thing, I wouldn't get in trouble. And of course, when I'm writing computer code, I look up things online all the time. I'm on, you know, one of my main tools when I'm programming is my search engine. I'm using it to find examples, using it to find different ways of doing things. I rarely cut and paste code. I don't really like to do that. I'd rather rewrite it myself to get a sense of how it works, but it doesn't matter. So why am I allowed to have this rule that you can't just find a solution to the assignment and submit it? Well, the goal of these assignments is for you to do them yourself, for you to come up with a solution, implement it yourself, fix the bugs, and have that experience. That experience is what my class is trying to provide. So from your perspective, what academic integrity means in my class and in a variety of other classes at college is that you are not necessarily going to approach the problems that we give you in the same way that you might in a non-academic setting. If you're working at a company, when you're off in the real world, when you're building things for yourself, by all means, make use of the internet. Use search. Don't reinvent the wheel. Find somebody else who did it. Use their code. Understand how it works. Find examples on Stack Overflow. That is fantastic. That's a great way to solve problems when you're not taking a class. But when you're taking a class and we're asking you to solve those problems from scratch, then finding somebody else's solution and submitting it as your own work constitutes cheating. And cheating is terrible because to me, what cheating means is, you know, I gave you this opportunity to learn something and you refuse to take it. And I know, I know, I get it. It's, you have to act a little bit differently. So, and this is true of probably all the classes you're going to take at college. This is true of all the classes you're going to take in this department. You're going to take courses where professors are going to ask you to solve problems. Let me give you a hint. Those problems have been solved before. If they hadn't been solved before, we wouldn't have an answer key. So of course we're asking you to solve problems that we know the answers to. And I suspect that other people have solved those problems. And I bet that if you use your search engine, you can find those solutions and submit them as your own work. But if you do that, you're not going to learn anything. And here's the thing, at some point in your life, maybe it won't happen at college, maybe it will happen after you get a job, someone is gonna ask you to do something that's gonna require all of these skills and abilities that we are trying to instill in you. It's gonna require that you actually be able to solve problems. It's not going to be something that you can just Google around and find online. Companies don't ask software developers to reinvent things, that's stupid. They would just say, go find it online and, and we'll use it. So when they have a problem, it's probably, a real problem, a new problem, a problem that doesn't yet have a solution, a problem that you can provide the solution for. So that's what I'm trying to prepare you for. And that's what my colleagues here at the university are trying to prepare you for. Part of that preparation means that you have to be careful about how you use search engines. If you have a question about whether or not it's appropriate to use various materials online, ask. That's the easiest way to avoid causing a problem, getting yourself into trouble, 
failing a class, maybe getting thrown out of the university entirely. Ask questions, but be cognizant of the fact that we are asking you to approach problems in a different way. We're not asking you to run to Google, find somebody else who did it, and just copy their work. We're asking you to come up with the solution on your own. We can't always supervise you, we can't be with you every day, every minute of every day, looking over your shoulder to make sure that you're not doing things in the wrong way, but I hope you're here to learn. We've done a lot of work to set up courses so that you can learn, so participate in that process, do the right thing, you know, don't commit academic integrity violations. You know, approach the problems that we're giving you in the spirit in which they are offered to give you a chance to learn, to give you a chance to grow. You can't do that if all you do is find somebody else's solution online. You'll also get in trouble. That'll also be terrible. But the real terrible part of catching people that are cheating is the fact that they missed an opportunity to learn something.